Hi, hope you're doing well. So today, I, uh, this is Anirudh, and I would like to demonstrate my uh, cloud assignment. So this assignment is basically a simple to-do app where a user can create, read, update, and delete tasks. A user will also be able to log in. There is uh, session management also happening. So uh, let's start, start off by uh, uploading this YML file onto, uh, onto the AWS service. So I'll head on to cloud formation. And uh, now I shall refresh. As you can see that there are many stacks here, but I will upload uh, the stack that I have created. So, so this is a simple command that will update, uh, that will push the stack. So I just have to change it to create. So AWS cloud formation, create stack, stack name, stack with Cognito. This is the uh, stack that I want to create and the template body uh, is cognito new dot so cognito new dot so as you can see there are no errors and we have uh, got the response of stack id so now i'll head on to cloud formation i'll refresh and we can see that our stack is being created so this stack is basically infrastructure as a code and whatever services that i want to uh, impl uh, implement in my whole project will be mentioned in this code so uh, as you can see that it it's creating a lot of things over here a lot of services over here to be precise there are lambda functions there there's a cognitive there are api gateways that are being created api methods and then its deployment and then uh, you'll see sns as well and then uh, dynamo db should also come up soon and some authorization things related to Cognito, all that is being uploaded. So whilst this is happening, I would uh, like to show you. Uh, oh yeah, so all, another thing along with all this, because I have deployed my front-end application, this is my React front-end application, as you can see over here. I have deployed my React front-end application on uh, AWS Beanstack. So uh, here is my, uh, so when we create a new stack, uh, there's an environment that gets created for Beanstack as well, and that is uh, that's also being created along with Stack with Cognito, which I just created. So if I head on to my S3 bucket, so I have created an uh, S3 bucket, and in this S3 bucket, I have uploaded a couple of things. So firstly, I have uploaded uh, a zip file of my app. So what I have done is. This is the, I'm sorry. This is the location of my, uh, where my application resides. And I have its build folder. I have its public source and uh, package folder. So I've zipped it all up into a to-do app version four. And I have uploaded that onto the S3 bucket. Now, furthermore, I have uh, uploaded my Lambda functions as well. Create to-do, delete to-do, get to-do, uh, and then uh, to-do app. Uh, version three. That's a zip file confirming user sign up, update to do, and uh, uh, things like that. So I have updated that onto my S3 bucket. So now uh, let's head on to our cloud formation and see the process progress. So you can see the progress over here. Uh, stack with Cognito is st it's still creating, but our environment for Beanstack is created. So that's the first thing that we can notice. Now. Um, while this is happening, uh, let me walk through. Uh, so let me walk through the walk you folks through the template that I've created. So this whole template is about 700 lines of code. So infrastructure as a code. It starts off by defining the resources stack where uh, we'll create our uh, you know app configurations, app name, and then the environment variables uh, required for Beanstack. This from here up to here, it's only for uh, Beanstack uh, for front end. And here you can see that uh, in my S3 bucket that I had previously shown, I have added my zip file over there. So that and uh, we create an environment for Beanstack where Beanstack begins. Now there are a couple of uh, APIs that are also created. Uh, confirm user function, subscribe for SNS. So confirm user function is a Cognito related Lambda function where um, a user's email address will get confirmed automatically uh, via this Lambda function. And uh, 
subscribe for sns will uh, create so sns simple notification service will create three to dos and uh, they'll get uh, notified uh, sorry when we go when we hit this lambda function what happens is the email subscribes to these three topics so that's how we enable notification system i will take a pause over here and i will head back onto the cloud formation to see the update so so now as you can see the create is complete so a stack with cognito has been created now what we do is um, i will head on to uh, cognito so aws cognito is uh, the identity management service and latest cognito latest pool cognito is what was created 5 minutes ago and this is the pool that was created by the stack so i have to head on to this and copy its user pool id then i'll head on to uh, user pool.js and i will paste it here i will tell the working why why i am doing this just and then i will head on to app integrations i'll scroll down and i'll should yeah here is my client id so for for me to utilize aws cognito services i need to add two ids one is the user pool id which has the uh, region name and another is the client id so i add this onto my code uh, onto my front end application and uh, then i can utilize this pool i can utilize this pool over here i can get this pool and i will be able to create an account context and this is how session management happens so um, this is the first thing that i need to change and then moving on um, so now that we have added our user pool details we'll head on to the api gateway so we head on to api gateway and once we head on to api gateway these are the apis but we are only bothered with the one created today that's on 12th so we'll head on to the to do api gateway cognito that's the name that i have given so uh, here you can see here are my 1 2 and totally six endpoints so here are my endpoints but if i head on to stages then uh, what we can notice over here is uh, the endpoints over here are all um, are all deployed these endpoints are deployed so what i have to do is i have to take this updated endpoint from beanstack and then i will head on to my uh, where i'm using them so i'm using i'm calling the axios uh, method to hit these endpoints and and i'll shall save them here and then i shall save them here again because uh, the endpoints will get updated every time we restart uh, the beanstack we update the beanstack so so i have to update them like this and these endpoints are updated these were four of these those endpoints and now we'll head back to the gateway and there are two more that we need to update one is authentication so i'll uh, authentication was in register here it is So I'll replace the old endpoint with the new one, and uh, the last SMS. So I'll uh, go back and I'll update the SMS endpoint as well. So now that these are updated, so this is done. Now my front end application can be connected. to the bean stack that's running but before that i'll have to do a npm run build so when i okay i have to enter into that directory so to choose directory client and uh, yeah here we have the package.json so i'll do an npm run build here so this will update the build folder because we need to upload so as i had mentioned again previously 
let me close this hold yeah so as i had mentioned previously we have to zip up all uh, these uh, folders and we have to upload it onto the s3 bucket again with the newer version so that's how this is so this will take some time until then we can get back with uh, the get back with the cognito to what i was talking about so here so um, this is the yml file and again the yml file confirm so we had stopped up till this part where i had spoken about the beanstack uh, stuff and then confirm user function from cognito side uh, sns from simple notification service and here we have four endpoints get put delete and create which are below so the get endpoint is again referencing to the database table name we'll, which is dynamo db we'll head down we'll head down there as well and again so we are getting the uh, from the s3 bucket which i had shown we are getting get to do dot zip that's the key and get to do dot zip con contains the uh, lambda function code similarly for put as well so we are doing this to eliminate hard coding and uh, similarly for delete and create and now we have created three three topics create put and delete so whenever a to do or tasks get gets created the email that is subscribed to to do will receive um, notification similarly for put and delete now we have the dynamo db table here so in the dynamo db table uh, we've created user id and task id so that's that's the dynamo db table and these are the attribute definitions for it and this is related to cognito we have a user pool and the user registration will take place via email only there are many ways to do it uh, but we'll go with that and and we have user pool client okay so this is done and we have a user pool client which gets created which creates the client id that i had entered over here so now uh, there is another authorizer this authorizer will connect our cognito with api gateway so uh, api gateway and uh, cognito gets uh, you know it gets linked and we can use the cognito user pools to uh, authorize every single endpoint so i'll take another pause over here up to this po point and uh, as you can see our build has been successful so we'll head back i'll delete the old to do app version 4 build folder public source folder package and package lock right click and i'll compress it to a zip file and we'll call this to do app version 5 so now that we have done this we'll head back on to our uh, we'll head back on to our uh, sorry uh, yeah we'll head back onto our s3 bucket and uh, here we'll you can see we already have to do up version 3 over here oh i had to make it version 4 but i ended up making it version 5 it's okay so i'll delete version 3 which is the existing one and i shall delete it here we go and type permanently delete the object gets deleted so now we'll close this and now okay we had to do app version 4 as well over here so we'll head on to to do app version 4 and we'll delete that as well permanently delete delete objects and uh, now we have 1 2 3 4 5 6 6 lambda functions for our six endpoints now we can update we can upload this uh to do app version 5 zip so we'll drop it here and we'll upload it onto s3 bucket so upload successful now we have to do app version 5 we have to copy this this is the s3 key for it we'll head on to our uh, cognito and over here what we shall do is we shall uh he head back to our beanstalk so here in our beanstalk we have done we have added the s3 key so i shall change this to version 5 i shall save this now and i'll head, head back to our uh, terminal 
here now instead of creating the stack we'll be updating the stack so here update comes into the picture we'll update the stack and we'll hit enter so now we have the updated endpoints in our code and we have added the updated uh, client id and user pool id so we have done that and now if we head back onto our cloud formation let me quickly refresh you can see that the update has started now this will get updated and in few seconds even this should get updated because this is the environment so uh, that that's the beanstack environment that will also get updated so now the beanstack is taking the updated code from uh, react so whilst this is happening i shall uh, continue with uh, the yml file so we we were we had stopped at user pool client so user pool client up till that authorizer i'm sorry so up till authorizer we were talking about aws cognito and uh, how cognito was getting connected to api gateway so now we have an api gateway that comes into the picture so we create one api gateway then within the api gateway we are creating one two three we are creating three resources the first resource api gateway resource is for my create read update and delete task endpoints this one uh, api gateway auth is for my cognito to confirm users and this last one last resource is for a uh, notification service so we have created three resources and uh, so we have three resources and here is our api gateway method so over here uh, uh, so e under each resource you can create methods for uh, post delete put um, and like that so here is our uh, uh, here is our method for one of the resources which is simple notification service as you can see here we have mentioned it's a post method and then it gets the a resource id from the this is the resource id of the uh, gateway and this is the this is the resource id this is the api gateway id and this does not require an authorization type um, and it's integrated with type aws and integration http post and then it gets the arn number of the lambda function this is the lambda function it gets its arn number these are the response templates and here we'll be able to enable course so course is uh, cross uh, browser access so it's for security reasons and it will accept that and here also it's allowed to true so that's for this method and it depends on the uh, api gateway resource so once the depends on means once the resource is created then we'll head on to the creation of the method similarly for uh, for authorizing user uh, it's the it's almost the same thing it's a post method itself uh, it's just that that depends on its own resource now here is the interesting part we have our uh, last resource for that we have get post put and delete so this time the authorization type is cognito user pools this this means that the user will be Uh, verified with JWT token, and then only these endpoints will be accessible, or else it will not. This is an increased security. So uh, again, we, that depends on its own resource. Then we have gateway method post. We scroll little down, put and delete. So we have that. Now I shall again take a pause over here, and we shall go back to our uh, cloud formation. and as you can see the update is complete yeah so the update is complete now i'll head back to our uh, uh, i'll now i'll head back to the gateway deployment so over here uh, we have api gateway deployment and uh, we can see that what and all gets deployed basically all the six uh, methods get deployed over here and uh, we have the api gateway permission so this this permission is between uh, it's to invoke the lambda function it's like an agreement between api gateway and the lambda function we have to provide uh, the permission for uh, all of our resources to be able to interact all of our methods to be able to interact with the lambda function okay so and these are some common parameters that i had used throughout the yml file 
which includes a uh, lambda function name which was used at various uh, locations and then dynamo table name and then the api name and environment name that i have kept it as prod so now now that the yml uh, part is done we'll head back to our so once uh, this is done we'll head on to our cloud formation now as you can see we've head on to the cloud formation and now i would uh, now i will show you every service that that the yml file created which ended up being created here so we can start off with the uh, from the basic cognito so here is the cognito user pool that was created for us so latest pool cognito and then here it will register the users once the users sign up now uh, the next service that we can go into is uh, let's close this bucket and okay we have two api gateways now we'll head on to the uh, lambda functions okay so this is our beam stack i'll close this as well so we have our we we'll head on to our lambda functions so let me open our lambda functions so we had as discussed previously we had created six lambda functions and now so here our lambda functions uh, are over here so now that our bean stack so if we head on to cloud formation again and we can see that there are, there are there were no errors while updating the bean stack so now we we can be confident and we can head on to uh, bean stack so we head on to elastic bean stack and we have our bean stack over here this is uh, what was created and its health status is okay so we enter into that and this is good news the green tick is basically good news now we open our application so now you can see over here that it's been uh, that it's been deployed and now anyone with this endpoint will be able to access it so now we'll uh, as uh, now i just clicked on your to do app and you can see that it, you it won't be able to render anything because we have to log in first that's the functionality of the react application we'll head on to login but before that we have to register so we'll register here and then i will open the console as well so we shall register here and let me register with my email address and here i will i would want to enable notifications so once i register you can see that we have got two successful uh, messages email has been verified notification email sent so now um now i'll head on to my mail and then we'll see the notification so here is our uh, this is a verification email from aws this verification email came from the cognito now if i head back onto the cognito and if i refresh you'll see that my uh, email address has been sent and my confirmation has been confirmed my status has been confirmed so that happened the confirmation status happened because uh, because of this lambda function confirm user function so if i enter uh, open confirm user function we'll be able to see the basic code of uh, basic code and how does it work so this is our function we are just uh, getting the pool id that we had mentioned in our code and we're getting the username of the logged in person and then we are confirming their sign up so that happens and uh, if i head back onto our react app and i head back onto register you can see that uh, when the submit button is created uh, pressed for clicked for registration uh, it hits the endpoint and it says email has been verified so that's the first good news next um if we head back onto our app you can see that uh, our second notification email has been sent so if i go back over here and we can see that we have three notification emails for create delete and put so i will click on confirm subscription and i have uh, confirmed that i i i would like to receive uh, notifications similarly for put and delete as well so i open that and then i have i have applied for, i have like enabled notification now 
Now let me log into the app. So once I click on login, our uh, login becomes successful and we enter onto the list of to do apps. So now, uh, so there are a lot of things happening over here. Let me go step by step. So first we have logged in and login is authentication. And once we get authenticated, we get our JWT token as displayed over here. So this JWT token is the header that is. This JWT token is the header that uh, uh, this JW token header is put onto every API. So that's what makes the API accessible. If you don't add the JW token, then you get unauthorized message. So here headers authorization and I have put the header config which gives the authorization and the JW token onto the URL over here. So that's how this happens. So now what I will do is now I will open uh, the Lambda function. So confirm use. Uh, I'm sorry. Confirm user function was to confirm the user, and now uh, I'll head back to the functions. And now I would search for the SNS. So subscribe for SNS. This is the uh, Lambda function that uh, takes an email address. It takes an email address, and then it takes the uh, SNS topics. ARN. So it takes the ARN and then it sends a confirmation email. And that was the email that we, we had seen over here that we were able to accept. So um, to make things clear with this, uh, we'll head on to SNS where I will uh, show you the three topics that get created. So we, we head on to SNS. So the six topics are the before created topics. We have create task SNS, delete task SNS, and put task SNS. These are the three S topics that get created with the confirmed user Anirudh Vasu. That's me. And for delete and for update. So here we have. Uh, so that means the email address that I have I had entered that is confirmed. So now it's subscribed to this topic that is put task SNS. And these are the ARN numbers that I was talking about. Amazon resource numbers. These ARN numbers are uh, put over here. And uh, this process.env is done to eliminate hard coding. And I've put it in a list. I've iterated through the list. And I am uh, doing sns.subscribe. I'm calling the subscribe method, which sends the note, uh, uh, email to us. Now we have our React app here with no, uh, with nothing, no, no data. So now what I'll do is I will head on to DynamoDB. DynamoDB is the backend that I'm using, database I'm using. And as I had mentioned in the YML file as well, the DynamoDB was created somewhere here itself. Yeah, DynamoDB. Here the DynamoDB is created with user ID and task ID. So now I will uh, go here. I will here's the dynamo db and I'll head on to tables. So to do table cognito is the table that we had just created. And if I uh, if it explore items, there are no items here because we haven't added anything yet. In fact, the registration that I just did on my application is the first user. So the first user is there and there's no data. Now I will say do the dishes. I would like to add this. Uh, to do so I've added that pressed on the add button. It says do the dishes. Now if I head back onto items. Do the dishes it's added. This user ID is the user ID that we get from Cognito. Uh, I have done this to authorize uh, a new users tasks and do the dishes. So that's another aspect. And now maybe now I'll OK. Now uh, let me head on to the Lambda function for uh, creating a task uh, to do so. So this is my function that creates the to do and the you, you can see here this another amazing feature about this. Once every to do gets created, what happens is so here uh, 
again process.env we're getting the table name from there and we are uh, saving the product on into the database and after the product is saved we also send a notification saying that a new task has been created and again using uh, the aws sns module i again publish an email so if i head back onto my email you should see an email over here saying that a new task has been created again now if i go back to our app and do the dishes now clear the laundry if i add this and then if i head back to my email i get the second notification pop up saying that a new task has been added again created new task has been created so i get this now that's the lambda function for update and uh, for create now now we'll go on to updating uh, the function so for updating the function i will again open um, functions and then i will cognito update so i will go to put and then uh, I go to put over here, and you can see that uh, here's the similar code. It's and it also sends a notification. Uh, it updates uh, data in the table, and then it sends a notification. So uh, now, if I head on to this, and then if I update, clear the laundry, saying laundry done. Now do something. Do something. So then, if I update it. it gets updated and i'll get a notification again saying that a task has been updated so it's the similar thing with delete as well uh, in running short on time so uh, i'll delete a task task gets deleted and then i'll be able to log out and then i can register with another account this is another account and then maybe i'll then i can enable the notifications i can register and then i will log in so i log in again and uh, again i'll receive all the notifications for this as well i'll just uh, create some to dos momos i like momos so we have this now if i head on to items and if i refresh you can see that this is task ids for every user these user ids are same and this and these two are different this is for the new user agrim and this these are for my own anirudh so that's how we uh, create this and that's how this uh, works so all the uh, post methods and all are called all the methods are called from axios from our uh, front end so uh, and this is the yml file which provisions all of the aws services so uh, thank you and uh, have a great day